So if you remember my Radiant Afterburner Ramjet video where I was talking about the compensator, I did some measurements and I said, hey, this really worked pretty good with Blazer Brass. I opined that with hotter ammo, things would be different. But that's opinion, right? We've talked to some people, a lot of people say, hey, you need more gas to run the compensator. And that seems like a valid hypothesis. So I tested an uncompensated gun and this gun with three different ammo types. And I tested them with the actual recoil meter so that I could get real numbers, like real objective numbers. I got a little bit of footage too of the actual shooting, but the footage never seemed to tell me as much as the actual numbers. In some cases, the numbers surprised me. In some cases, it was what you expect. Uh, the real question I always had is, with a comp, should you always run hotter ammo? Because that seems like the general rule of thumb, hey, you got a comp, you should run hotter ammo. That way, it'll work better. And to that, I, I gotta say maybe. So I got real hard numbers, like I said, I'm gonna share them with you and some observations, so stick around. So I shot two different guns with three different kinds of ammunition, ran it all with a recoil meter, including this fine specimen right here. Hey, I just cleaned it, it's uh, actually clean. It was a lot easier to get the comp off than I thought it'd be after 3,500 3, rounds. It uh, hadn't welded itself, but I definitely had to jiggle it to get it off. I digress. Shot three different guns, two different guns, three different ammo types. And I did it all with a recoil meter so I could figure out what the difference was. First, my non-compensated gun was my Glock 17. And I shot it first with some very mild ammo. They're 124 grain hand loads coming out right about a thousand feet per second. Looks a little bit like this. Then I shot it with some more entertaining ammo, some hotter ammo, not quite the hottest. Once again, hand loads. I switched powders, went with power pistol, about 6.1 grains. It's about 1100, 1130, somewhere around there in terms of muzzle velocity. There is notably more recoil, more noise, and more muzzle flash with that powder. So it's giving me a lot of gas. The assumption was that would do something with the compensator. And then of course I shot it with the hottest ammo that I have that's commercially available. And that would be the Federal HST 124 grain plus P. Obviously all of them in nine millimeter. The power pistol hand loads and the HSTs, I couldn't tell a lot of difference between, but the recoil meter did. Let me back up. For the mildest ammo, the very mildest ammo, in the non-compensated, just plain old Glock 17, it was around 20.3 degrees of muzzle rise for each time I shot, about 20.3 degrees. No compensator, no nothing. Then with the medium, the medium stuff, my hand loads with the power pistol, the muzzle rise was about 26.9 degrees of muzzle rise. Stouter, it's definitely a stouter load. Like I said, subjectively, it feels hotter to me. So it wasn't nuclear, that's within the listed loads. Hey, if you do your own hand loads, make sure you follow all of the safety procedures. Don't take anything I say for granted, make sure you double check. Uh, you could uh, not blow off your face, your hands, uh, or blow up your gun. So make sure you're following all of the po proper safety protocols for reloading. I digress. And then with the hottest, with the HSTs, 28.7 degrees of muzzle rise. So it was indeed slightly hotter. I didn't quite get my medium hot hand loads up to the full stoutness of a plus P load, but they weren't radically off from it in terms of feel. Now, like I said, the recoil meter said, hey, 
a little bit hotter, a little bit hotter. Then I went back and I shot all three of those with this gun, um, my compensator, the Radian Comp. So it's not a huge compensator, it's a single chamber dual top port, if you can see that. So the question is, one is, is this doing anything? Two, is it doing anything with the really mild loads? And three, would it do more with the hotter loads? So to answer the questions first, with the mild load and this gun with this comp muzzle rise was 16.8 degrees so less so it's still doing something even with very gentle loads now it's not doing a ton when i look at my notes about 16.7 percent so with the mildest loads from uncomp to comp about 16.7 percent difference between the two which is still something, right? It's not zero. You're probably saying, well, I shoot minor loads all the times. So I, you know, is 16% muzzle rise worth putting a comp on or 16% reduction in muzzle rise worth a comp? That's a question, guys, only you can answer. Things got a little more interesting when I went to the hotter loads, though. When I shot my medium hand loads, medium to hot hand loads through this, the muzzle rise was 19 degrees, 19.05 degrees. So the difference between the medium with the comp and without the comp was almost 30%, 29.2%. So with those hand loads, that comp was making a huge difference, almost 30%, more than I saw with the Blazer Brass, if you remember my previous video. So then I decided, well, what about the, what about the hot, like going from the uncomped with the 124 grain plus P HSTs and same round through the comp. We went from 28.7 degrees muzzle rise with the no compensator to 21.59 degrees with the comp. About 24.9, 25%. Now it didn't make quite as much of a percentage difference with the HSTs as it did with my hand loads. My theory, and this is pure theory, the HST may have a slightly faster burning powder than what I used the power pistol. If I called up Federal and asked them about the burn rate, I'm sure they would probably tell me some choice things that probably I can't repeat here without getting a uh, strike, and they probably would not tell me any details. It's proprietary stuff. But were I to guess, just based on what I saw, I think that the HSTs, despite moving at a slightly faster velocity than my hand loads, are not burning as slow a powder, probably they want less muzzle flash. There's any number of reasons why they pick the powder they pick. With the factory plus P loads, not quite as much, but it still did a good deal. Like I said, almost 25% reduction in muzzle climb. With my hand loads, the difference was substantive. I thought that was pretty interesting. So look, here's the thing that I found, at least my first conclusion. No matter what ammo you're running in a gun, a compensator will make some difference. Uh, I've never seen it not make at least some difference across the board. Now, is that little difference depending on the ammo you're using enough for you to care? That's a question, guys, only you can answer. Only who can prevent forest fires? But the really interesting thing is when I started comparing a little apples to oranges and I compare the mild ammo out of the uncomped gun to the medium hand loads, medium hot hand loads that I made out of a comped gun. And if you compare those with the comp, the muzzle rise was 6% less, even with hotter ammo. So from the completely uncompensated, but very gentle ammo to some pretty hotter ammo, this gun actually tracked flatter with that. Like I said, when we compare two different ammo types and two different guns, and it may not be a fair comparison, but it does lend a little bit of credence to that. Hey, you need some gas to run a comp. It makes me understand why open guns that have to run major power factor really benefit from a comp, because if you had to run major with no comp, your muzzle climb is going to be real. That comp is really starting to cut that down. And I wonder if I went to an even slower powder than power pistol, uh, I think HS6 comes to mind. I don't have any of it handy, otherwise I'd probably run another test. 
if somebody wants to send me a pound of HS6, by the way, or an, an equally slow powder, like one of the ones that people use for nine millimeter major or anything like that, I'd be curious. I'm not gonna load up to major though. I'm not gonna do that in this gun. Sorry guys, run your own tests, blow your own face off. But I will say that I'd be really curious. You might see even further benefit to the compensator. If I compare the mild versus the hot, then the difference, the hot through the comp is still giving you more muzzle climb than the mild with the uncompensated, but only to the tune of like 6%, like one to two degrees. So a compensator always shines. It always shines. But the hotter the ammo, the more it shines. And I can definitely say that for sure. So would I take this off if I were only shooting minor? Um, for competition purposes, sure. For real world, no. I've seen no real world detriment to running this comp. And so I'm going to keep running it. But even with the mildest ammo, the gentlest, mildest ammo that will still cycle this gun, this compensator still gives some benefit. And that's pretty awesome. And like I said, I've seen no reliability issues. This gun's run really well. But there's some numbers for you. There's some footage. I hope that that was interesting and maybe informative. If you're on the fence about a comp, if you have the cash and you want to try it, guys, I cannot say anything bad about it at this point. Obviously, there's holster issues. There's a cash issue, installation issues, blah, blah, blah. But I've not had any real problems. If you see my other video where I did a fairly in-depth test of the Radian, I'm still happy with it even now and uh, probably another three weeks after I did that video. So, like I said, not trying to sway you one way or the other, but I'm starting to like compensators more and more. I'm going to end this here. I'm not going to really beat this up. I thought that the numbers might be interesting to you and the footage if you so choose to go back and look at it. Like I said, in other videos I've seen people go, oh, this is flatter, this is this, this is that, but they never really give real data. They just go, hey, this feels a certain way. Well, feeling is cool, but I like numbers because numbers tell a story. And so that's why I did this video. If you have enjoyed this at all, guys, I really appreciate any likes and subscriptions that you give me. If you subscribe, you're going to see more content like this. You're also going to see other content featuring knives, booze, and other topics that are kind of in the same EDC, uh, I hate to say prepping, but you know things that might be of use to you should circumstances become a little more extreme than normal. Guys, take care. Stay safe. I'll talk to you soon. Get him, Jay.